Hi, it's Alison Foden here again from Melksham Team Ministry. It's really good to connect with you again tonight, Saturday night, the night before Sunday, the fifth Sunday in Lent, which is the beginning of Passion Tide. Passion is a word that we use all the time. When I go to visit people for funeral visits, I often say, what were their passions? And I'm often heard to say, I'm passionate about sharing the word of God with people. But the passion and the period of time, the last two weeks of the journey towards the cross, passion has a very different meaning. It might be better to say, what are you willing to die for? That's the kind of passion that we're talking about during this journey. I think that's even more powerful at the moment when we think about the sacrifices that people make. What are you willing to die for as you go into work and serve your patients, the people who need you in ambulances, when you deliver food to doors? What is your passion? What would you die for? It's quite stark, isn't it? It really does make you think. What would Jesus die for? The answer for that one, I think, is, is even more powerful and makes me draw breath every time I think about it. He would die for me and he would die for you. And he did. As we've been journeying through Lent, we're in the wilderness period with Jesus in the desert, thinking about his temptations, thinking about the beginnings of his ministry. But then we move into this period of the passion and he knows exactly what he's going to be facing. He knows what's coming his way and still he journeys towards it. The power in that, I think, is incredible. You know you're going to suffer physically, crucifixion. Imagine the cross. We have a, a metal cross here but he died on a wooden tree with nails that broke in through his bones. The pain would have been excruciating. He knew he was going to suffer and die. He also knew he was going to suffer mentally, emotionally. He was going to be hated, rejected, spurned. All of those things he knew that he would encounter and still he journeyed on because he was passionate about dying for you and for me. I often wonder whether Jesus actually knew that he would struggle so much as he died on the cross, asking that question, Father, why have you forsaken me? That spiritual struggle, did he know that he would be in that place too? It's really, really tough. For many people, coming along to church, even if you're not a regular attender, there might be Mothering Sunday in the middle of Lent that you would come to normally if the church is open and celebrate and share flowers and laughter and life. And then we go through the fifth Sunday of Lent and in towards Pan Sunday. When we wave our palms, we think about Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem with everyone singing Hosanna, shouting, putting cloaks in front of them, an amazing spectacle of adoration. And Jesus stepped into that knowing the tables would turn, knowing how things would end. And if we step into that Palm Sunday, which will come next week, and then go on to Easter day. I think we lose a huge amount of that story of Jesus. So I invite you over these next two weeks to journey with us. Every day we will have our reflection, we'll think about the themes of the passion and we'll think about what it means for us today. And as we go into Holy Week and we really start to walk the walk of the cross, 
in a year where we probably feel the weight of the cross heavier than we have ever felt before on our own lives, in our own nation and our whole world. The power of walking with Jesus and knowing that there is nothing that we suffer that he has not suffered himself is a strength and ultimately a comfort. And when we walk through the pain of Good Friday and we suffer with him and we come through into the amazing Easter day, it will be all the sweeter. And as we journey through these really difficult times, and we learn to care for one another, to express our love in different ways, to support our neighbours, people we know and people we don't. We will grow into a people who truly are an Easter people, filled with life and hope and resurrection joy. And I can't wait for that moment on Easter day, even if we are still in the midst of chaos we are reminded that that gift of life in Jesus is eternity, never to be taken from us and always giving us hope. Don't forget to join us tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock when we celebrate Holy Communion together. Find us here as usual and I look forward to journeying through the passion with you as we think about what we would die for. As you join us tomorrow morning, come prepared, have ready some tea and toast, bread and wine or cake and juice and be ready to sit at table and share in the journey of Christ's table. Bye for now.